Hey guys, this is a talk on modeling with quadratic functions. Uh, let's get started with some core concepts. So in this section, we'll learn how to write quadratic equations given a variety of data. So first, we could be given a point and the vertex of the parabola or the vertex of the quadratic equation. And then in that scenario, we would want to use the vertex form. Hopefully you're familiar with this from past sections, but as a reminder, the vertex form of a parabola is y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where h comma k form the coordinates of the vertex. On the other hand, if we're given a point and x-intercepts instead, so instead of being given a point and a vertex, if we're given a point and two x-intercepts, we can use the intercept form, which is similar but not the same, and that equation is y equals a times the quantity x minus p, p is the first x-intercept, times the quantity x minus q, q is the second one. And then finally, there's a third scenario where, and this will typically happen with tables of values, where you're given three points, and it might be more, you might be given five points, or you might be given seven points. But regardless, we choose three points to analyze, and then we write and solve a system of three by three system, or three equations in three variables. Uh, let's get started. Let's take a look at some of the examples in this section. So here we have something of the type 1 problem, where we were given a vertex and a point. In this case, we know that the vertex of this parabola is 2 comma negative 2, and we know that the parabola passes through a point 4 comma 6. So I prefer to start by writing my given, so I know that my given point that the curve passes through is 4 comma 6, and I annotate that as x comma y. My vertex based on the graph is two comma negative two. I annotate that as h comma k. The equation we're going to use, again, I'm referencing this first equation. Using that equation, all we have to do is plug in the numbers where they belong. So we see that y, which is right here, is six. So instead of the y, I replace it with a six. A is the unknown. A is what we're solving for, so it'll just keep coming along for the ride. X in this problem is 4. That's the X coordinate of the point that the function passes through, so we replace it with a 4. H is 2, so I place a 2 there. And then finally, K is negative 2, so we swap negative 2 in for K. Now, 4 minus 2 is 2, so that's the only simplification I'm doing at this stage. The 6 is coming along as it is. The A is coming along as it is. 4 minus 2 is 2. And then a positive times a negative 2 is negative 2. This is just cleaning up a little bit of the arithmetic. Now 2 squared is 4, so we can rewrite this as 6 equals 4a minus 2. Now in order to solve for a, we need to isolate it so we can add the 2 over to the other side. And doing so, 6 plus 2 will give us 8. So now we have the equation 8 equals 4a. Solving for a, we can divide both sides by 4 and get a is equal to 8 over 4 or 2. So since we had h and k already, all we have to do is figure out what a is, and we already did that. We found that a was 2. So the equation of the parabola that passes through 4 comma 6 and has a vertex of 2 comma negative 2 is y equals 2 times the quantity x minus 2 squared minus 2. And this equation is in vertex form, because from this equation, you can determine what the vertex is. Similar question. Here we are given a point 2 comma 1, and the vertex is 0 comma 3. So annotated again, the point is 2 comma 1, the vertex is 0 comma 3. And it's solved the exact same way. There's no difference between this solution and the previous one. So we start with the equation itself, y equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k. This is vertex form. And then you just plug in the numbers where they go. The y is 1, a is unknown, x is 2, h is 0, k is 3. So because there's a whole bunch of letters floating around here, it's a lot easier for me at least to annotate or label what my variables are. So this way I don't make a mistake by accidentally picking zero as the x coordinate to go in here when it really should be two. So we do the simplification or we plug in and do the substitution and now we simplify the arithmetic parts 
2 minus 0 is simply 0. Uh, sorry, 2 minus 0 is simply 2. Everything else came along as it is. 2 squared is 4, so we can rewrite this as 4a. Now, in order to solve for a, I need to solve and, and get a by itself. So the 3 needs to move over to the other side. In order to do that, I would have to subtract this 3 because it's being added on the right-hand side. So if I subtract the 3 over, I get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And I still have the 4a on the right-hand side. And then finally, in order to get rid of this 4, I can divide it over to the other side because currently it's being multiplied. So the inverse operation of multiplication would be division. And then finally, a would equal negative 2 over 4, which cleans up or reduces to negative 1 half. So as before, we have our equation in vertex form, y equals a, which is negative 1 half, we just figured it out, times the quantity x minus h, which is 0, excuse me, uh, the quantity squared plus k, which is 3 from right here. And this is our equation in vertex form. For this next question, or for this next part, it's the same exact question. We want to come up with the equation of a, uh, of a parabola in vertex form. And instead of being given a graph, we're given a point and we're given a vertex. So it's the exact same givens, they're just presented in a different manner. Instead of the graph being presented to you, you're presented with the points directly. So no difference in the way I approach the problem, it is exactly the same. I write down my point, this is x, this is y. I write down my vertex, negative 1, negative 8. And this is simply given to us in the problem. So no inference is being drawn, you're just looking at the question and writing down the givens. Now because we want it in vertex form, I'm going to start with that equation. And then just like in the past two examples, I would just plug the numbers in. So y we know is 0, a is unknown, x is negative 3, so instead of this x, we write a negative 3 here. h is negative 1. So now notice here that I have a minus h. If h is already negative, in order to avoid a mistake here, I personally always put negative numbers in parentheses whether I need to or not. Because now I have a minus a negative number, which eventually will become a positive. So oftentimes, a common mistake that students will make at this stage is, just say, well, h is already negative, so let me just write negative 3 minus 1. And that would be incorrect. So you want to pause, make sure you make a note of this, make sure you're not falling for this trap in the future. Continuing on, so we find out that h was negative 1. We plugged it in here, and then k finally is negative 8. Again, I always try to make sure that my negative numbers go inside parentheses, whether I need to or not. Uh, now some arithmetic cleaning up, 0 is 0, a is a, negative times a negative is positive, so that's indicated here, negative 3 plus 1, and then positive times a negative is negative, so indicated by negative 8 here. And then negative 3 plus 1 yields negative 2, everything else stayed the same, negative 2 the quantity squared, negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, so I can rearrange this or rewrite it as 4a. And we still have the same equation, 0 equals 4a minus 8. Goal is still to solve for a just like it was in the previous problems. So we add the 8 over to the other side. 0 plus 8 is 8. And at this stage, we all we have to do is just divide the 4 over to the other side and get a equals 8 over 4, which cleans up to 2. So as we've done in the past two examples, we just come up with our equation, y equals a, which is 2 times the quantity x minus negative 1, but minus and a minus will make a positive, so x plus 1, the quantity squared, minus k, uh, sorry, plus k, which is negative 8. Uh, 